The devil whispered, You cannot withstand the storm. The warrior replied, I am the storm. You are a warrior. You will get through the storm. You will show the storm who's boss. You will show everyone you are stronger than all things that have hurt you. You are stronger than your past. You are stronger than the challenges coming in your future. You will tell yourself, I don't invite life's challenges, but I don't back down from them either. I know we all face tough times. I know I'm not exempt from life's struggles, but I know I am strong. I know this will pass. I know there will be better days, but only if I keep fighting like a warrior, fighting with all my heart. The heart of a lion, the strength I have is like no other. I am not a survivor, I am a warrior. I don't survive, I thrive. I can do this and I will get through this. Warriors are built from the struggle, formed from pain, strengthened by adversity. Embrace your challenges and push through them like the warrior you are. You are stronger than your past and you are stronger than the challenges coming in your future. The strength I have is like no other. I am not a survivor. I am a warrior. I don't survive. I thrive. I can do this and I will get through this. I make the best of bad situations. I see the opportunity in the struggle. I grow strength from my hardships. 
I am thankful for my hard times. They make me stronger. I am thankful for the pain. It makes me raise my game. I am grateful for the worst of times. It ensures my story will be a great one. From zero to hero. From nothing to something. From the bottom to the top. Here I come. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, and for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Peace be to the brethren, and love with faith from God the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. And amen, amen, amen. How is everybody doing? How are we doing today? I am so excited. Guess who is back? <gasps> Jay West, are you kidding me? Jay West is here. Hey, Jay. Yay. I'm just enjoying this. <laughs> you like all my morning, you like all the morning stuff, huh? Yeah. I, I, I came up, well, I didn't, but I think I think I need to do something. Remember the old Jackie Gleason, like the old Jackie Gleason show, and he was used to go, and away we go. I can't believe you, you're, you. There's no way you're that old enough to remember that show. Mm -hmm. I Well, I used to watch a lot of old television shows because oh, of, um, yeah, I used to love like, um, What's it called? Um, um, Laurel and Hardy. I used to watch them. Three Stooges. But my favorite was Abbott and Costello. Wow. That was my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> I like watching Dick Van Dyke trip over the, the ottoman as he came in the room. Right? Yeah. right? I'm just telling you. But I, I, I saw that. I saw Jackie Gleason go, and away we go. So I think I might have to. I think I might need to do that. All right, let's see. Let's see who is in the uh, in the chat this morning. <laughs> good morning, Travis is in the house. First one in. Whoop whoop whoop. Okay, good morning to my Shelly girl. Good morning to D. Good morning, Swim Robin. Good morning to Amy for the love of us. Good morning. Good morning to Irene. Let's see who else is here. Tara is here. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see who else is here. Laura's in the house. Whoop, whoop. AJ. AJ is in the house. Morning, AJ. Love you, AJ. Good morning, good morning. Let me see. Tara is, I think I said Tara, but we'll say Tara twice. Double Tara. Double Dar Tara blessing. Good morning to Derek Lynn, Kim Florida Patriot. Good morning, good morning. Nancy Wilson. Nancy Wilson is in the house. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Let's see who else is here. Uh, Travis is armored up. He is armored up and standing with God against evil and tyranny. Woo, there we go. Brother John is in the house. There you go. There you go. There you go. Let's see who else is here. Let's see who else. Yeah, that's exactly it. Zip, bam, boom, to the moon, Alice, to the moon. Hello, Wendy. Wendy's in the house. Good morning to Wendy. And then, of course, uh, Mastery Runs for Me and Andy Griffith Show. Hey, I'm just telling you, there's nothing wrong with old TV. Just saying. Good morning, Heidi Love, although I think yeah. there's been some programming in that, too. Yes. Okay, if you didn't get a chance to see last night's interview with Steve Peace Harmon, please make sure, do yourself a favor, go over there. 
because he was dropping truth bombs like like candy. I'm just out. I'm just telling you guys. And uh, so there we go. So how are you doing, Jay? You just got back from some traveling. You're a traveling man. You're like Linda Jones. You've been everywhere. Yeah, I just got back from Houston and mm -hmm. getting ready to go to Minneapolis next week. So yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So it is, and I really believe, yeah, last night, last night was so much fun. Yes, and I love Lucy. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. That's actually one of my favorites because my husband being a producer, he's like, Lucy, you can't be in the show. <laughs> you can't be in the show. Good morning, Riley Queen. I'm like, but Ricky. You could do the uh, sequel, I Love Lisa. I Love Lisa. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Jay, we are excited because we don't only have you for one day, but not one, not one, but two, two, two days. days. Tomorrow, we're... To make it happen for several months, it never works. I know it's going to be so much fun. So we're gonna we're gonna do some stuff, and we need to make sure that we get some of your people to say hello, right? Hi, yeah. love. Good morning, Hi. Pat. I've got it on my channel. I hope they tune in. So anyway, I don't know. We will see. I'm sure they will. But make sure if you guys are, are friends with Jay, please make sure that you say hi so we can say hello, because it's it's all about the chat. Right. Especially today, because what are we going to do? We are going to be answering questions. Oh, no. Say it isn't so. Yes. We are, we are going to be answering any questions that you can have about spiritual gifts. So, so Jay, we are given spiritual gifts, aren't we? And if I don't know the answer, Lisa will. So <laughs> we're going we're gonna to see. Okay. So, so let's talk about spiritual gifts. So can I, can I just, can I, can I interject one thing? Because I want to, sure, absolutely. So you had Brian Sims on Monday. Yes. He was so insightful. I've never thought about one, one thing he said about, Fruit of the spirit. We're talking about gifts, but the fruit of the spirit, you know, uh, recreates the personality of Jesus in our lives. Yes. And the, gift of the spirit recreates the ministry of Jesus in our lives. But he yes. said, he said, love is the one is a primary fruit, and then the other are eight expressions of that love. And I just I wrote that down. That's that's an insightful, you know, downpour, whatever you want to call it, amazing yeah. right. And we need to keep that in mind as we talk about the gifts that the love. Of the kingdom, the love of God, not our love of ourselves, is what's important in the gifts. So, oh wait, I gotta get my cow ready for you, Jay, because I have a feeling we're gonna be kicking some cows. Hold on, I gotta get some cows ready. Okay, yes, let's 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 talk about that because because if we have no if we have no love, right? It's right. like a it's like a clanging symbol. Right. It's like a clanging symbol. So we need to we I'm, I'm gonna have to get something that goes. Bang! Because there, or or the monkey. Remember the annoying monkey who would sit there and clang the symbol. And at first you think, oh, it's so cute and everything. And then all of a sudden you're like, kill the monkey, <laughs> kill the monkey, stop the monkey from clanging it's because easy. it becomes annoying. annoying. Because I often tell people in the congregation, I'll say, turn your neighbor, say you're anointed, and they'll do that. <laughs> and I'll say, I didn't say to say you're annoying. <laughs> right. Exactly. Okay. So so let's. Let's then let's talk about let's talk about the the spiritual gifts that we are given, okay? But let's talk about how we can operate them in love. How about that? What if we what if we turn the spiritual gifts into a love fest? That these are the love gifts that God gives us to help love other people. Right, Ooh. and there's multiple yeah. places. You know, I I just have one to start. First Peter. 410 says, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another, you know? So it's it's about serving other people. It's not about making yourself look good, about promoting your next book, you know, or your next speaking engagement. You know, it's to advance the kingdom and help other people. So it has to be well, let's, let, let, let's talk about that because as soon as you said that, it's about serving other people. Okay. So I'm gonna, we're going to probably have a lot of movie references because apparently God's talking to me with movies this morning and television. Okay, so in the movie A Christmas Story, okay, in the very, very beginning, you know, Ralphie says, my mother hasn't had a hot meal in years because <laughs> she's always serving. All right. She, but she did it in joy. She did it. She did it because that's what a mother does. 
That's what a that's what a father does. Look, if we were able to sit on our blessed assurances, nobody would be working. Right. right. I'm just saying. So when we are doing stuff, we're doing it for other people. That's the way that the kingdom grows. It, it's right. never our gifts. Like my gifts, my gifts are not for me. I hate to like it's the truth. It's not for me. It's for other people. Right. I can't benefit from my gifts. I can only give my gifts to other people. Yeah, I don't remember the exact verse. It's in Colossians 1, maybe 25 or 27. It says, the gifts of God are given to me for you to advance the kingdom. You know, it's not given to me for me. It's given to me for you. Right. And you're just given to you for me. So, yeah. Exactly. So, and that's that's uh, the whole point. So, let's let's look at some of these gifts. What are what are some of the gifts that 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 are spiritual gifts? Because we we can see we can see that Holy Spirit chooses what gifts we're supposed to get, correct? Right. So there's actually three gifts. There's three texts for the gifts. First Corinthians 11 or 12 has the uh, gifts of the Holy Spirit. They're the supernatural right. gifts. Then right. in Romans 12 is more the gifts of service. Yeah. And in Ephesians 4 are the gifts of, of Jesus. Each one, the gifts of the Father in Romans 12, the gifts of the Holy Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12, and the gifts of Jesus are in Ephesians 4. Each one of the Trinity has gifts that he gives to, to the whole body, so. Okay, let's stop right there. Okay. So it's like on Christmas, Papa and the Son and Holy Spirit are giving you guys gifts. Everybody's right. getting a gift, right? right? Right, So So we get, to, but so many people, Jay, don't unpack yeah. them. Yeah, they no, don't, they don't they don't operate in them, they don't unpack them, they don't use them. It's kind of like you know that those kids who you would go and it would be their birthday and they would open up their stuff, but then they wouldn't open it until after everybody left and you would be annoyed. Right. Yeah. <laughs> especially, especially if it wasn't like if it was something that could be played with other people. Right. Not for not for them, like you know, but something that could be played with other people, and everybody wanted to to right. to play with the toy, but they're like, "I'll just open this later." That it was so annoying. It was that you know, they were that kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, I'm opening up presents. I'm like, "All right," and then you know, we're just giving everything away. Mm -hmm. Other people don't recognize it as a gift. They'll say, you know, "People recognize it in them and say, oh, that flows so naturally in your life." You know, mm -hmm. teaching, writing, sharing serving yeah, mercy whatever you know they'll say that flows naturally in your life and they're like yeah i guess so but they never really connected the dots so yeah, yeah. So. well okay so let's so then so there are the red the the gifts the redemptive gifts how people operate and when you under so do you want to talk about the gifts of the holy spirit which are more of the signs wonders and miracle gifts that the holy spirit gives because a lot of people, there are so many, so many misunderstandings of so many of the gifts, right. especially the ones that the Holy Spirit gives, because, because it says that the Holy Spirit chooses which gifts to bring. And so many people, so many people think, oh, well, I don't have the gift of healing. But if you are confronted with a situation that needs healing, suddenly you can operate in it. Absolutely. Everybody has at least one gift, according to 1 Peter 4, 10. Right. Many people have many more gifts than one. Right. And everybody has, every believer has access to all the gifts. Okay. So, you know, and at any given moment, you're, you're, in, you're in a checkout line at, say, Walmart, and you're talking to the person behind you or in front of you, and somehow in the conversation, you ask, how are they? And they go, well, my neck's really sore and I have a nagging headache. You have access to the gift of healing or the gift of faith at that very moment to pray for them if you want to go that direction, you know. So. Right, right, right. Okay, so let's let's start breaking down. Let's start bringing down the miracle gifts. Okay. Let's let's start let's start with that. Okay. Okay, so we got to be in, if you're if you're following along, turn your Bibles or on your phone app to First Corinthians twelve because that's where they'll be. That's where they are. Okay, so everybody turn to First Corinthians twelve. Now, I personally like the Passion Translation. You guys can use whatever, um, whatever you know, translation you like. But I felt, I feel like Brian really kind of puts things down. I love the little notes he puts. Yeah, I don't have the Passion Translation of the New Testament. But that's okay. You can read yours, and then I can, if it, if it's like, um, well, if it gives, go ahead. No, you can read yours too. Um, yeah. You know, we can start, I think we can start a lot of places. Verse 7 a spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. There it is again, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, 
just a, just a re-emphasis of why these gifts are given to help other people. Yes. Well, and it says like it, th- he says the same God distributes different kinds of different kinds of miracles that accomplish different results through each believer's gift and ministry as he energizes and activates them. And I think that's so important because it's we look you you can have five hundred dollars but if you don't ever use it it's going to be like you don't even have it right right or you can have five hundred dollars in your account if you never make a withdrawal on it yep you know it sits there in the bank the bank has it but you don't have it has it you don't have it that's right right. okay i like that word that he used you said energizes that's a good word for the anointing the anointing will energize you so yeah and this is and this is it says each believer is given continuous revelation by the holy spirit to benefit not just himself but all right right but all and yeah. and all is all and new, new new king james which i used for years i just switched to the living translation but new king james says for the profit of everybody it's to, it's to make them better than they were prior to getting the gift yeah. having the gift uh applied to their lives right whatever's going on yeah right and so this is the other thing that that brian put he said he says that um which i thought it says to summarize god the father the son and spirit delights to give spiritual gifts to his people the bride of christ doesn't a doesn't a groom give his bride a gift sometimes they do these gifts are imparted by god to every believer upon conversion as the holy spirit chooses they will confirm the word of god and expand the kingdom of god now this is the this was something i thought that was really important spiritual gifts can be neglected and misused but they remain the divine power source of christ's body on the earth that's how we know that holy spirit is alive and well (laughs) i think it's in matthew jesus says don't neglect the gift that's already been given to you you know Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. many people do they neglect it they don't want to uh i don't know they're afraid if nothing else you know right well okay so we're gonna i wanted to start with wisdom right or the word of knowledge yeah let's do that that's great because i've got a i've got a vivid example for myself just this week so perfect perfect okay go ahead Well, I was going to say the word of knowledge is that, you know, something that is present or past. It is not future. It is present or past. Yeah, that's a good good definition. You know, and I have a philosophy of words of knowledge. I'd rather speak them. I'd rather share them and be wrong than not share them and be wrong. Okay, we'll kick a cow. Hold on. We'll start. We're going to start. We're starting, Jay. Here come the cow kicking. Wait, wait, wait. Ah! Okay, there we go. He has a cowbell. I love it. I forgot that I was just got this recently, so. Okay. That's so good. Okay, so we're going to talk about, so word of knowledge. So let's go. So, you know, um, this, when, if you get a word of knowledge, it comes to you. Let's say, let's say I share a word of knowledge with you. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's, it's as if Jesus is talking to you. Okay. Mm-hmm. How do you, how do you, fe- how would you feel if Jesus walked into the room and just told you something? How does that make you feel? Right. You know, does that make right. you feel good? Does it yeah. make you feel warm and loved? Does it make you feel excited? Mm-hmm. You know, how, how is that word from the Lord received into your spirit? Right. You know, and I, I know that I've shared words with people and my words are always encouraging. They'll be they may relate to something that that, that like you started writing. I've shared this with people. You started writing a book 10 years ago. You wrote three chapters. And you never finished it. God, God wants to know when you're going to finish it. You know, it's not there's no condemnation in that. It's just God saying, hey, I started this in you. Philippians 1, 6, he which has begun a good work in you will complete it. Allow God to keep working in you, finish the book. You know, it's not a word of condemnation. It's a word of encouragement. Yes. It's not, because I've had people say to me when I've been ministering words of knowledge in congregation, I've had people say, I was so sure you were going to call it my sin. And I was, I, I would like, first of all, I believe in the laws of sowing and reaping. I don't want my sin on the PowerPoint, so I'm not going to call yours out, you know. Come on. Oh, I never. I've, I've rarely gotten sin. There's occasionally 
that, that I have, but I've gone to them real, real, real quietly and whispered in their ears and confirmed it with a couple other people before we even did it, you know? Yeah. So, uh, but, um, and then, I, then I've told these people too, but if you have sin in your life, you might want to repent of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Okay. So let's, because this is, this is my heart and, and this is what I know true about God. Okay. Is he does not operate in shame. Right. Jesus exactly. never called somebody out except for the Pharisees, because the Pharisees were like, they thought they were all that in a bag of chips. And he called them, he called them a den of vipers, but he didn't. Okay, so this is the thing. He was calling out the church. He wasn't calling out the individual. He never, he never spoke to one person and said that you were this or you were that. He never said it individually. He said it as a group. I was, I would say there are times I think he did that, like the woman caught in adultery. He right. said, the guy you're living with is not your husband either. So he kind of did. But, 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 Jay, yeah. he was alone. Yes. You can't be ashamed. You can't be embarrassed if if you know what you right. did, no, but there's that. nobody else around you. Nobody else around. Exactly. 100%. Exactly. When he when he called out the den of vipers, there were people present. Right. Right. But he didn't call out an individual. Right. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. So, okay. yeah. So that's why I said to these people, I would whisper in their ear and say, hey, you know, here's what the, I sense the Lord is saying. And, you know, I remember years ago, John Wimber gave an, ex, uh, an account where he was on an airplane and he saw the word adultery written all across the forehead of the guy, his seatmate, you know. Yeah. So after a long conversation of getting to know him and everything else on this long flight, he finally said, hey, this is what I see. And the yeah. guy just started weeping, you know. So, yeah. uh, so God will reveal things. But. To, to bring that person back into the kingdom. That's know? right. Not to shame and embarrass them. Right. That's not who he is. All right. So we had a question there further. Yeah. I, I don't see it about what's the difference between word and knowledge and prophecy. So, I mean, Lisa, you, you already hit on it. You said a word and knowledge is past and present. Yep. And, and I would add in prophecy is for the future. Is that, yeah. Would you agree? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, and this is, this is the thing. It's going to be somebody, um, that's why psychics and mediums only know they can only do word of knowledge, but they can manipulate your future because they're operating with with uh, spirits. Yeah. Sometimes you get a blend. Uh, I remember a case where I was at a Hispanic church and I told the uh, worship leader that uh, uh, she was dating the wrong guy. This is through translation, by the way, too. She was dating the wrong guy. He would be trouble for her. She needed to consider breaking up with this guy. If she did, then uh, her old boyfriend would come back to church, get right with God and ask her out and eventually ask her to marry him. Okay. And all, and all those things happened. And a year later, I went to the wedding. I was invited to the wedding. So there was a blend. Oh, and on the day of the wedding, the boyfriend she broke up with was sitting in jail here in our city with drug charges pending against him. So it was a word of knowledge about trouble with a boyfriend, simultaneously a prophetic word about what was going to happen if, right. she acted. if she had not acted on breaking up with a boyfriend. I don't think any of the rest would have happened. Well, see, and that's the sometimes that sometimes there is a partnership. I always think that there is a partnership with a prophecy. Right. Because because a word of knowledge, there's nothing to partner with. It already is or it has been. So there's nothing to partner with. However, when you're talking about prophecy, it's like somebody could could say to you, Jay, they could say, um, Jay, I see you uh, uh, speaking in, uh, in these places in California, but you refuse to go to California. Is that prophecy going to come to pass? All right. Yeah. Not because you have free will. And that's what we talked about yesterday. So many people think that that God is in charge, but God is only in charge if we let him. Right. Right. No, we have to respond to the still small voice, to the prompting of the Holy Spirit, to the scriptures we read. The words and knowledge, the prophecies, whatever we have to respond with, just step out. So, yeah, 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 hundred yeah. percent. I'm just trying to catch these questions. Yeah, uh, yep, 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 yep. Yeah. Okay, so, so let's let's talk about let's talk about word of knowledge. Okay, so word of knowledge can sometimes help somebody with their breakthrough too, because yes. sometimes the Holy Spirit will tell will tell the person. Okay. Like say you're praying for somebody, you're praying for a healing for somebody, okay? And you start to suddenly get the medical terminology of what is wrong with the person. Right. 
because I get that. I'll get medical terms <laughs> that I don't even know about. I right. once. I once had to say to somebody, do you have planners, fascia, fascia? And I could hear it in my head. Right. Fasciitis. Right. I didn't know what that was. I had to, they said, yes, that's exactly what I have. But yeah, I had I, to there, the right? most classic one I ever had was I told a lady, you have Mendelssohn's disease. Uh, and she said, yeah, my doctor just told me this week I might have Mendelssohn's disease. You know, it's like, I didn't know. I didn't have a clue what yeah, it was. What is that? I heard the word. How would yeah. I know? Yeah, exactly. So, but Holy Spirit knows. And so when you know that, when you know that, see, this is, this is how I pray. It's like, if I know that God is in it, then we're in it to win it. Yeah. If I'm getting a word of knowledge from Holy Spirit. That is accurate. That is accurate. Then I will continue to move forward. If I'm getting no, no, no. Right. Right. Then I know it's me. Yeah. And you know, the Bible says, that we know his voice we follow him mm -hmm. you gotta you gotta know his voice you can't I, I just read something this morning that somebody wrote on facebook they said that they were being challenged by a word they share and they said you know i get hundreds of words and only i only release a very small amount most of them i right. just pray through i pray into i never say anything about them right you know and so a lot of times you get a word and i've had i've had people give me words or whatever and i was like mm, that doesn't really fit and i remember saying to one person one time I just said I think that works for you, not for me, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and they didn't really like that too much, but later they came back and said, you know what? You're right. And uh, I should have, I should have been more careful. So yeah. you need to be careful, especially with prophecy, you know, words of knowledge. If I share words of knowledge, if I give you words of knowledge and I'm wrong, who looks bad? You do. I do. So what? I can deal with that. But if yeah. I give you, if I give you a prophecy and it's wrong, I, I look, I could look bad, but you're going to end up in a mess. You Let's know, talk about that. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Be careful what people say to you and about you. Right. Yeah. Because sometimes people people can be cursing you. Sometimes there can be people who can come in and if, and if if you don't trust them, you don't have to. That's the other thing. You don't have to accept every word that is given to you. That's right. Yeah. You don't you don't have to. You can you don't, say, you, say you don't have to receive it. You don't even have to resemble it. OK. Yes. Come on. Yeah. Well, no, because a lot of people think, well, they, this must have come from God. But you have Holy Spirit inside of you. Right. You have the Holy Spirit inside of you. And if there is something that does not resonate with you, you can be like, mm, I don't know about that. And but sometimes. Sometimes it really is from God and you don't even have to believe it, but it truly, but it will surely come to pass. All right. Years, years ago, uh, probably about 19, I was, I was involved in a spirit filled Lutheran church. I know it's kind of an oxymoron. And, uh, but, uh, uh, a prophetic guy came through and he said, you're, you're in a box you're and you're all tied up in the box. And then when you get out of the box, you and I didn't realize it at the time, but it was, it was I had to get out of that system. I, I yeah. minister, I'm going this church I'm going to in Minneapolis in a, in a week for 10 days is Lutheran. I love I hang around with a lot of Lutherans, but I was in this particular Lutheran box. Right. That was confining. And he said, once you get out of the box, you're going to experience freedom, you know, and I yeah. did. You know? And so yeah. uh, and that can be on that can be on anything you're doing. It can be a job you're involved in. And God wants to promote you, move to, to another place. And he's been telling you over and over. It's time to move, you know, and you and you you don't want to move because you've got security, you've got your four hundred one k, you've got your retirement, you've got uh, vacation, paid vacation, you've got all these things that you really like, but God's really waiting to elevate you to a new level, and you aren't willing to step. So, and the Bible says the steps of righteous people ordered by the Lord, and it's not the first step. I tell people all the time, it's not the first step; it's the subsequent steps afterwards. That's that right. You can't get to those if you don't take the first step. Okay, let's kick that cow. Hold on. I always see the um, <laughs> I always I always see the or hear whenever it's about taking the steps, right? And it, because even in the the what's called the Christmas uh, animated thing, Santa Claus is coming to town. It's put one foot in front of the other. Yeah. That's it. Sometimes God just needs you to put one foot. That's how we can partner. It's like, okay, Lord, I this I receive this. I'm gonna start moving into it. But he has to have your yes. Right. He has to have your yes. 
right? You have to be willing. I say a 119 yeah. sister, willing and obedient. God yeah. will give you the good of the land. You have to be willing, but then you have yeah. to be obedient. Yeah. You just, if you're just willing, nothing happens. You just sit That's and sit it. on it. Hey, so, look, obedience is one of the most important things that God is looking for. Because if he can trust you with the little, he will give you the more. Right, exactly. So yeah. that's that's like, okay, so we, we've talked about word of knowledge. We've we've talked about prophecy, okay? Uh, how do you let the new church know you are stepping up? Okay, so D, I would think that when you are moving, people are going to recognize when God is moving through you. Right, yeah. You, people, Other people will confirm it and affirm it in you. You don't have to. Yeah. You just begin stepping out in it yeah. and step out in it without drawing attention to yourself. That's without, right. Without making 10 posts on social media, without uh, sending an email to all your friends, without, you know, right. whatever, without, right. promote, you don't have to promote yourself. God will promote right. you. That's yeah. right. That yeah. And that right there, that that's the thing. That's how you know it's a God thing. Because right. God will do it. Right. It's God like when I, it. I began praying for political leaders when God began opening the doors supernaturally politicians started coming to me. I didn't have to look for them. They all they yeah. started coming to me. Yep. Uh, that was clear that I was supposed to be doing that and continue doing it. So well and same with touch by prayer. I yeah. I didn't know anybody. I knew nobody. I was interviewing people from my church when I well, started touch by prayer. You no, know, I, I like you've had Sean Hurley and Brian Simmons. You've had so many different people that you know I you know them better. I, I barely know them. It's like the God opens the doors for you to talk to certain people he opens the doors for me to talk to other people he won't open the doors for you so uh, it's all about the kingdom it's That's all about right. expanding and advancing the kingdom of god for jesus you know it's not about making a name for ourselves how many no. we've done, how many podcasts we've done you know how big our ministry is who cares you know no exactly and that's that's the thing because the the connections that i have with certain people that it's not just for the platform it's because i'm friends with them i love them i pray for them i'm i can call them like right. they're friends it, it it's not it, it's not to to get something out of it that's the other thing but i'm gonna say this <clears throat> When um, when you are when you know that when you know that you know that you know that you're being moved, okay, you you walk differently. Yeah. You walk differently. You speak differently. And sometimes it seems as if you have to take a couple steps backwards in order to start moving forwards. But it's like the the, the analogy I keep seeing is where it says stretch out your tent, stretch right. out the tent pegs. Because the tent is going to be stretched. So things are going to expand. But it looks like before that can happen, something has to come down. All right. All right. Yeah. Okay. And often where you're going, I was just reading Exodus 12 or something where the other day where Abraham it said he was going where he didn't know where he was going. And he took yeah. all his herds and his flocks. And I yeah. mean, he had a big entourage. This is not just one guy walking down the street with a camel. Okay. And he gets yeah. to the new destination and he's welcome there and, and they give him more sheep and they give him more cows. And that's an affirmation that you know what you're, you know, that God's working in your life. You go to a brand new place and you find favor uh, that, that wasn't there. So, right. And that's, so that's the other thing. So I hope that answers some questions about when you're being, when you're being moved, because God will make it, it'll be easy. I'm going to also say that when, when God is moving people out of your life, Okay, not because they did something wrong. It doesn't hurt. But right. when but when man does it, dang, dang, it hurts. It right. hurts. Yeah, it hurts. Yeah. It hurts. It hurts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, That's you know, the difference when it's a God thing versus a man thing. Right. So this, Tara just wrote about her business. Thank you, Jay. I thought I was done with business, but things are lining up that I'll be going back to it. You know. You know, that's, that's when you start to see clear things coming to you without you trying to manipulate them, uh, get somebody to help you. Um, you know, you have to go sign a note at a bank to buy it or whatever. You know, it's just stuff just comes to you. And, right. and God will. So here, like here's a simple thing. You know, on more than one occasion, God's given me the price of a used car. And I didn't even pray about it. I just downloaded the price. I walked right. in the. You know, I just drove it and I shared it. I didn't even say God said, I just shared the price. And each time that the, the uh, salesperson said, they'll never take that. And each time they, they came back, shaking her head and said, I, this is amazing. They took your price without any haggling, without any discussion, nothing. You know, it's God. 
Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. So we, so I think that we, we pretty much have talked about word of knowledge and we talked about prophecy. Let's talk about some of the other things. Let, let's talk about the gift of healing. Cause okay. that, that's one of your wheelhouses. Yeah, it is. Uh, but you know, I still only, I don't see a hundred percent healed. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I see about 75%. When I started, it was about 5%. Right. You know, and it gradually grew and it gra in increments. It grew yeah. and it grew as my, partly as my faith grew, but partly as my willingness to um, take a risk, I guess, you know, yeah. pray, for, pray for people. When I first started praying for people with walkers and canes and wheelchairs, right. that was like, I can't do that. You know what I'm saying? Right. But gradually right. started doing it and started seeing people lay down their walkers, lay down their canes, get out of their wheelchairs. Right. Not in like super abundance, but enough to make it known or deaf ears. How about deaf ears? Yeah. So many, I've seen so many deaf ears open. Now it's a it's a piece of cake. And I don't mean that to say it's like I can do it. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, right, right. But, but I have the faith to do it now that I didn't have yeah. before. So, yeah. Well, and okay, somebody once told me that people have certain anointings for certain things. Okay, so apparently I have an anointing for backs, for feet, <laughs> right? For backs, for feet, and what's the other thing? Oh, and like for for scars and moles, I, I I've seen scars disappear. Like like as I pray, I see them literally disappear. Right. But but that's Holy Spirit. That's not me. That's that's the Holy Spirit. But there is an anointing and a belief now that I have that if I lay hands on somebody for a back injury or a foot or something like that, that they're going to get healed. One of them that I flow in, uh, and I don't get to use it as often because it, it doesn't come up because people don't identify it, but it's praying for couples who can't get pregnant. So, um, yeah. Oh yes. And that too, that too. <laughs> okay. So how can you access this Patty Schwartz? Everybody can. If you are a believer in Christ, if you've been filled with Holy Spirit, it says that the Holy Spirit will give these things. But we 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 have to be obedient to what Holy Spirit tells us to do. Jesus said, I only do what I see my father in heaven do. That's it. Jesus, right. Jesus went. OK, he went out. He said so. So basically, OK, <laughs> um, so basically what happened is that when we when we see something or or somebody gets highlighted that's one of the things i always see is like somebody can possibly get highlighted or or you can sometimes have a dream about somebody you'll have a dream about a certain thing and then all of a sudden you meet somebody like because that happened right where all of a sudden or you can can you explain jay can you explain like sometimes we can feel some of the the issues like all of a sudden we wake up and like maybe our back is hurting or our hip is hurting and then all of a sudden we meet somebody who's having a hip issue right. we pray for them our hip issue goes like you know, what the heck <laughs> did you lose your microphone so no i did and i almost i almost dropped something i'm good i'm good yeah <laughs> well, i remember this healing service locally i was doing and i get Sometimes I'll get pain in my body. Yeah. You know, and it's a word of knowledge that somebody else has that situation. But I misinterpreted one. I get, I was praying. A lot of things were happening at once. I had a lot of people working, right. a lot of people praying. I got this deep pain in my side. And I thought it was demonic. I thought it was a distraction, you know, and I was like rebuking it and, and it wasn't going away. It was getting worse. I thought, this has got to be from the devil. I don't know why I was thinking that. And one of my team members came up and they said, there's a lady over here. And she's having deep pain in her side. I've been praying for her and I can't get it to leave. And I go, oh, duh. Okay. This was about her, not about, you know. And so as soon as I shifted gears and prayed for her, my pain left and she got well, you know. And so even if you're, my point is, even if you're misinterpreting something or misapplying something, God will bring, he, he he's about helping somebody else. He'll bring you a way to release what's in you to them. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so let's because we were just talking about word of knowledge. So right. you can have a word of knowledge that's not just an image, that's not just a, an understanding or a knowing, but you can also have a physical manifestation of a word of knowledge. Right. Or you can be prompted to do something. I gave, and it's a rather, you know, uh, you've probably heard this. I know you've heard the story, but I, I was doing some student ministry and I, prompt, I was prompted to stop in the middle of my message and give a teenage girl $17, $20. 
you know, and, and she went on about how she hated her school and she didn't want to be in this youth thing. And but she knew I was coming that morning. It was, it was a kind of a set of revival meetings. And she she hated God. She said it in front of everybody, I hate God. She said, but then I prayed, I kind of prayed and I said, God, if you're real, have somebody give me twenty dollars today. You know, and so I'd given her twenty dollars. I stopped right in the middle of a message. I think at the beginning everybody thought it was part of my message, but it wasn't. Right. It was word of knowledge. Yeah. You know, and I just heard it and did it. And she got saved. She committed her life to the Lord that day. So you know, we have to be willing to change our course right in the middle. Yes. You know, how many times has God spoken to you say, take a different direction home? Okay. And you didn't do yep. it. And then you hit a bunch of traffic. Yeah. You know, or you got a flat tire or whatever. And you think, geez, I should have listened, you know? Yeah. And, uh, I mean, it's real simple things lots of times. Go, God had me go in a different line at, at a grocery store one time so I could pray for the checker. I was in the short line with, you know, 12 items or less. And it made me go in the long line. There's a whole bunch of people, but I ended up praying for the checker, you know, for a, for a certain thing. So you just have to be willing to, willing and obedient. You just have to be willing to do it. So. Okay. The more, so, the more you do it, the more you see God's blessing. So, okay. So, all right. Let let let's talk about this. Let's talk about faith. Yeah. Let's talk about faith because there is a gift of faith. What's right. the difference between just faith and the gift of faith? Well, let's let's look at Romans twelve verse three, if you don't mind. So Romans yep, twelve three says, "Faith is given by a measure." Yep. Okay. Yeah. And there's a reason for that. God wants us to grow our faith. Yeah. There's multiple ways we can grow it. The most common one people quote, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. But you can pray yep. for more faith. There's a lot of ways you can get faith. OK. But then if you go to John 3, 34, it says the Holy Spirit is given without measure. Right. So faith is given with a measure. Holy Spirit is given without measure. Right. OK. And it frustrates me. A lot of people pray for a double portion anointing. OK. And that's an Old Testament principle. But if faith is given without a measure, how can I double it? Like I've got my coffee cup here. All right. I can fill this to the rim and I can measure how much is in here. Right. But if something has no measure, how can I double it? Right. You have okay. To and and, and, and yeah. here's here's the kicker. Here's your here's your cowbell thing. What if you're praying for a double portion anointing and you need 10 times the amount? Ooh. You're gonna come up short. Ooh, all right, let's kick. Hold on. <laughs> We'll do that. Okay. It's the first time I've ever asked you to keep the cowbell. <laughs> okay. So, so sometimes we do, sometimes we need like huge faith, great faith, big faith right. in order to, to, to see some of the big things right. because it's, what is it? It's, um, what is it? Uh, faith without, faith without works is dead. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. You, know, so, you, have faith, you have faith like a mustard seed. How big is a mustard it. seed? But what if you need faith like a watermelon? <laughs> you know. Sometimes I need. I sometimes I need faith like the Empire State Building. Absolutely. Yeah. Because that's a, that kind of faith will move mountains. That kind of faith says that I don't care what is happening. I know what God has said. Right. Exactly. That's the kind of faith that moves you into the places and spaces that that are are really. Um, because the enemy will sit there and say, oh, that's not God. Or you'll have people coming against you saying, oh, that's not God. You know, what are you doing? You need to do this. You need to do that. But when you know that you know that you know what God has said to you, you don't back down. That's the thing. It's like when you've done all that you can do, you stand. Right. You do exactly. not take a knee. You just stand. You say, okay, Lord, this is what I know that you've said to me. Right. And this is what I'm believing for. And I'm going to say this at... My, my husband joke. He says it jokingly, but it's true. He says, man, he goes, Lisa will take Jesus's feet and put it to the fire because if he said it, I believe it. Right. Absolutely. If that's, that's the thing. It's like, if Jesus said it, then I believe it. That's, that's what we need to do. And it's going to be that kind of faith that, that really gets things moving and changing and shifting. And for me, you know, I, I don't think I have the gift of healing. A lot of people think I do. I don't. I, but I know mm -hmm. I have the gift of faith and I can yeah. believe God for just about anything. Yeah, you know? same. So mm -hmm. I see things and I don't, financial things, moving, uh, you know, uh, healing, uh, whatever it is. I don't see it as a mountain, as a blockade, as something that's going to prevent me. I see it as an opportunity. Right. You know? And I right. go, hey, I can believe for this. It might take a while, but I can believe for it. 
Right. And, and I'm okay with that. I'm not like stressed uh, under a huge level of anxiety, uh, feeling self-condemnation if it doesn't happen the first day. Right. Uh, you know, okay. That's the big thing. Like you did. Ephesians six. I'm standing. So right, and that's um that's the big thing. Sometimes is that like if you like I've known people that have been said that that it's been said that they're supposed to operate in healing. Okay, so they go out, they pray for people, and they're not healed, and they right. pray for another person, and they're not healed, and they get discouraged, and they turn around and they walk away. Right. They're like, oh, I guess I misunderstood, but it's like no. It's oh. like, you know that it's like, sometimes we have to, it's like priming the well, right? The All more right. that sometimes we pray for something, it's priming the well, it's building up our faith so that when we're, when we're dealing with stuff, we can start to see things shift. Like when, when, when people say, oh, you can't do this. I love that. <laughs> people tell me, they're like, oh, you can't do that. You can't do that. I'm like, oh yeah watch me and that but but i'm not talking about like in a god way like but that's always been my nature like when people would say oh you can't you can't do this or you can't make that or you can't do this i'd be like yeah i can and i would show them that i could do it because there's something that is built inside of me that has that like that fighter fighter spirit so then when i came into kingdom my personality it it didn't necessarily change it got refined. I'll put it that way. Because now it's like, no, with God, I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that's the big thing is that he strengthens us to do the fun stuff. Right. You know, and there's like, like drilling for water. There's some, some parts of the country, you can drill down 20 feet and you find water. And other places you have to drill down 100 right. feet before you get to a water table, you know, and it's going to take some tenacity. It's going to take some right. work. And, and, and these dry places, They'll tell you, you can find water at 100 feet, but you really ought to go to the second water table at 150 feet, you know, so you never run out, you know, and it's, it takes work, whatever that is. It takes work to get right. down there. And a lot of people want to quit and give up. You know, I, I go back to John Wimber again. He's kind of, you know, my model for healing. And the, at the vineyard, he planted, you know, started a lot of the vineyard churches and all. And he, the first year, nobody got well. In fact, a lot of them died, you know. And uh, and he he, yeah. he he on the altar laid down. He pounded his fist. And he said, "It's not fair. It's not fair. <clears throat> you don't back up what you say." And God said, "Don't go by experience. Go by my word." You know. And like a week later, he saw his first healing, and from there, it just took off. So. Yeah. Well, and that that's the whole thing. It's like it, any. I think any time that that Jesus, like he shocked, he shocked the disciples. Anything that he did. Right. anything that they and then when he sent them out they were so excited they were going out healing the sick they were raising they were more excited about being that the demons obeyed them right yeah. like that that like right. you know what i mean you're you're seeing people getting healed and set free but you're more excited about demons and that that's the thing it's like sometimes and you, what did jesus say to him he said don't be excited about the demons but be excited that your name's written in the book of life that's what you need right. to be excited about you know and Again, people look at the natural first. It's, right. it's, it's just common. We look at the natural rather than the supernatural. We look at the possible rather than the impossible. You know, right. but when the impossible becomes possible, you know that you have now shifted gears. You know That's that right. you're when you start operating in the supernatural, when the supernatural becomes natural for you, right? Then you know you've you've made some proper steps towards what God has for you. Right. Well, let's look at this. You know, we all we all said the sinner's prayer, right? We all said the sinner's prayer. We have to have faith that right. we truly have been forgiven. Right. And if we still are walking around thinking right. that we still are carrying our stuff, then we still that we really haven't received. Right. It's been a it, it, it's like, what is it? Um, it's like partial. It's like, no, we have to believe that we have been bought, we've been purchased, that that we have been adopted, that he sees us as a son or as a daughter. We That has to be so ingrained in us. And the only way that that's going to happen is through faith. Right. And if you can believe that your sins have been washed away out of your own life, right? totally eradicated, totally separated, sanctified, set apart, whatever words you want to use, if you can believe for that, believing for the gifts of the Spirit ought to be easy. 
That's right. So, and yeah. so, and if you can believe that people can be healed, there's a difference between healing and miracles. Right. Oh, people yeah. think that that they're the same thing, but they're not. Because sometimes healing takes time. Yeah. Yeah. Miracles are immediate. Right. Right. And some healings with Jesus were miraculous, but others yeah. were, you know, the lepers were healed, 10 lepers were healed as they went. Right. And we're not told how far they went. That's you know, it. They might have gone a block, but what if they went three days' journey? You know, that's it. Or a week, or a week you know. Yeah. And, and there have been differences with, with healing. Right. Because I've seen people get healed, but I've seen more, I think more of the things that I've seen has has been more miraculous. Like like where where um scars disappear, legs grow out, backs get healed, like immediate, like they're and never never coming back. Never right. coming back. Right. That's or a miracle. Simple things where, you know, like God's revealed to me when earthquakes are happening in California, whatever I said, you know. That's a miracle. You know, it's hard enough. It's hard enough to predict a storm that's coming. The weatherman and everybody else says it's going to hit here. It's going to right. four or five inches. Right. And when it gets there, it's a trace. They yeah. mess it all up, you know. Yeah. For, for God to tell you there's going to be an earthquake or a, a tsunami or, you know, uh, a, a volcano erupting or whatever. It's just incredible. Those are right. miraculous things. So, right. Yeah. Same yeah. with casting out demons. Yeah. Yeah. Like that, then, you know, that's a miracle. But but yeah. how about when money magically appears, Jay? Right. What happens when money, does money magically appear? Oh, it must be magic. Yeah. No, <laughs> <laughs> I, I won't even use that word. Sorry, I can't use the word magic. But mm -hmm. you know, God blesses you or whatever, or gives you information. You know, I was going to talk about word of wisdom if I could just for a moment. So sure, I'm, I'm, I'm technologically challenged. Okay. I'll just, I'll admit it. Okay. And I did these TV shows down in Houston last week and we did 10 of them. Rebecca and I did 10 of them with my friend, Larry Langston. And he sends me the files and normally I download the file to my computer then upload it to my YouTube account. But right. he made these video short files of one to two minutes long and he sent me a bunch of them. And they wouldn't upload, all right? Uh -huh. And I had no idea how to do it. I was so frustrated. He kept telling me, we gotta do this and this and this. I couldn't figure it out, I couldn't see it. So I went outside, I prayed, I said, I just sat down in my chair outside and said, God, I need wisdom to solve this problem. Okay. I came back in and it hit me how to do it. And I was able to extract the files one by one. They went to a separate file folder. Then I uploaded them all to my YouTube and it was, it was easy, but I, I didn't know how to do it at all, but I asked God for wisdom and he gave it. That's you right. Know? So That's right. I know, I know you know how to do that, but I didn't know how to do it prior to Monday. Now I know how to do it. So, yeah. Well, there you go. Now you can teach me. I will tell you that some of the things that I've learned how to do has been because Holy Spirit has shown me how to do it. All right. Because I, I, I have no idea. Half of the things that I do, like right. I have no idea, but all of a sudden God just, he shows it to me. He like, like it, it um, because I'm creative. And I like to do something. So like, I like to create things as part of it. Then, and, and actually it's part of my wheelhouse. So, so I'm like, I'll, I'll see it in here. If I can see it in here, I know that I can do it. If that makes sense. Somebody yeah. wrote, Linda, Linda wrote, can't never did anything. You know, uh, yeah. seven most deadly words in the church are, you know, we've never done it this way before. Yeah. Uh, you know, we can't do this before, you know, Jesus, well, every time somebody says I can't do it, I go, I guess Philippians 4 13 is, is, uh, is not the truth. Then I can do yeah. all things through Christ who's right. So, exactly. Exactly. Right. But also, if you're saying can't, you've already come into agreement with the enemy. Right. There, yeah, there's, a big, there's a big difference between can't and won't. You know? Come on. Yeah. I think you had a cow kick for that. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All I right. Get all this time, so okay. That's okay. That's okay. So, all right. So we we we've talked about word of knowledge. We've talked about prophecy. We've talked about the gift of faith. We've talked about the working of miracles. Okay. Now comes the big one. This is one I think that we need to pray for: the gift of discernment. Can you explain what true discernment is? Well, you know, it's not really the discernment. It says the gift of discerning spirits. Thank you. Okay. Discernment is totally different than discerning spirits. All right. That's right. 
And so a lot of people confuse the two. And, you know, my classic example was when I was on an getting, I was in an airport and I heard, don't get on the plane, it's going to crash. And I heard it over and over. And then I guess I'm getting on the plane. Don't get on the plane, it's going to crash. When I got on the plane, louder and louder in my head, get off the plane, it's going to crash. Get off the plane, it's going to crash. And I'm thinking, what do I do? If yeah. I, you know, the Bible says, whatever's not done in faith is sin. I want to make a choice that's filled with faith, not sin. Uh, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against it. I want to know for certain, am I listening to God or am I listening to the devil? Who's talking to me? Right. You know, because I've got to know if, if I make the wrong decision, I stay on the plane crashes. I'm yeah. dead. Okay. If I get off, you know, and the plane doesn't crash, it's a waste of time. Right. You know so I'm listening, 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 and I'm praying. And then I heard in my voice and in my head, I heard, you know, I, I remember John 10, 27, my sheep know my voice, they hear me and they follow me. And I decided, based on that verse, I decided to stay on the plane. Yeah. And the plane didn't crash. And the crash. Then the plane didn't crash. Because the, the reason I stayed on the plane, in all the years that God had been talking to me, up to that point and today too, he never once raised his voice to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I discerned it was the spirit trying to get yeah. me, delay me from going to the next place. So it's a discerning of spirits. And I made the right choice, you know. So um, obviously, you know, it's not always that easy, but but God provides a way through his word. If you know the word, here, here's a little saying I have. If you uh, if you work the word, the word will work for you. Mm -hmm. okay? And mm -hmm. so we got it. We got it. You can't you got to get into the word, folks. You got to know the Bible. Yep. You know what it says, so. yep. Yep. And that that's the big thing. A lot of people have like people will say, well, I have very good discernment. They'll they'll say that I know when somebody's lying. Right. I said, well. I said, that's really what you're discerning is the spirit behind the person. I said, because they're because the devil is a liar. So right. you're picking so, up that yeah. it's a spirit. So Missy wrote discerning spirits. I asked myself, is this Jesus or the devil? Sometimes I don't know. When you don't know, pray about it. You can fast for a little while. You can go to a trusted friend or two, the mouth of two or three witnesses. It'll be established. You know, get some support from somebody else to help you hear what you think you're hearing and discern, is it from God or the enemy? You right. Know? And right. Is, is it going to produce fruit? Um, if it if it produces condemnation, you know it's not from God. We know right. that from Romans 8. There's therefore now no condemnation. No, no, no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Okay. So it's, if it's producing condemnation, it's not from God. So right. there's a lot of tests you can have. As you walk through to, de to, to determine, is the word from God or not? So. Right. So in other words, like God's not going to say, oh, you really messed up this time. Yeah, that's not God. Right. Or, oh, you really are in a pickle now. Yeah, not God. Yeah. Because God doesn't operate that way. What he will do, what the Holy Spirit will say is you can't say that. You need to repent. Right. You'll, 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 get, you'll get that sense in your spirit that's going to be like... Ooh, I shouldn't have done that. You'll know. You'll know in your knower. You'll know in your knower. But but the enemy is never ever gonna say you're a mess. You're you've you you've screwed up. I can't use you. Never. That will never come from God. Let me, God let me, add, let me ask you. Missy's question. Don't go to somebody that doesn't have a track record of hearing from God. Oh, that's good. Where did that go? You can't. You can't go to somebody who's never heard from God or doesn't have a good track record makes a million mistakes you need to go to people you trust who are prayerful who yeah. simultaneously not only are they prayerful they won't go tell 10 of their friends what you're thinking about either okay because that's another big in the in the church they everybody started talking did you hear so and so's going to try that well they're ridiculous they're not, you, know, you know and they they kill it in the box so yep well yeah. and that's the other thing too um some sometimes god is doing something in a person and so you have to be really careful that you don't discuss it because you could be pulling up the seeds that God has planted. Right, exactly. And so, you know, Missy's question is a great one because a lot of people are, are get into that predicament. Is yeah. this from God or is it from the devil? Is it my thoughts? Is it just a wish thing, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, you know, and Linda just wrote, there you go, I look at the fruit, right? And we go back yeah. to where we started with Brian Simmons. Does it produce love? Does, does what God's, what you're hearing, does it make you fall more in love with Jesus? Does it make you fall more in love with the word? Does it make you fall more in love with helping other people? 
You know, right. if it's a love of self, it's probably a very distorted love. It's it's yes. inappropriate. It's not accurate. It's there's something wrong with it. But it's all about you. Yeah. The passages in First Corinthians twelve verse seven, First Peter four ten. We read the gifts are for other people, not for for ourselves. So, mom, that's so good. Okay, let let's go to the next gift. Okay. Okay. Speaking in it says and to the other the gift of speaking different kinds of tongues. Okay. Let's talk yes. about that. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> well, let's talk, let's talk about let's first talk about the importance, okay? Because I am I am pro um uh, what is it called? Um I can't think of the word. Um what is the word? What is uh, the the scientific word of um speaking in tongues? Praying in the spirit? No, 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 no. There's actually there's a there's a word that they call it. But anyway, okay, let's talk about speaking. Let's talk about praying in tongues okay. and the importance of it. So because first, I, am a pro, I, I, I am pro speaking in tongues and praying in tongues. Okay, and I am too. So 1 Corinthians 14 says you'll pray in the spirit and you'll pray with understanding. You'll sing in the spirit, you'll sing with understanding. So Jude says when you pray in the spirit, it builds up your faith. So just praying in tongues. So here's, here's the deal. You've been praying for something for a long time. And you prayed a hundred times and your faith has dropped down because you haven't seen the answer. It's gone mm -hmm. lower and lower. So you start praying in tongues. And what happens is your faith starts growing and it starts going back up. And then you can go back into your native language, whether it's English or French or Spanish or whatever it is. And you then you can pray again in, in, with understanding. Yes. Okay. So it's called got, um, glow cell light. Wait, <laughs> I can't say it. It's, it's or yeah, something. yeah, something like that. It's glossolalic, right? Glossolalic. You know, I've, I've had lots of times where I've had to pray in tongues to get through something to build my faith up. Uh, right. God, God's called me to a season of different times of praying in tongues for certain things for 30 minutes a day until I saw the breakthrough. Uh, there's been multiple times that that has happened. Um, and some people say, well, it's not. It's not a language I've ever heard. Well, First yeah. Corinthians 13 says you'll pray with the tongues of men and of angels. You know, how yes, many, yes, how yes, many yes. angels have you heard talk recently? You know, yes. so how, do you know, how do you know it's not a language? How do you know it's not a heavenly language? So, well, OK, so that's the thing, because he says that that I speak to men or I speak of angels. There right. is angelic tongues. Right. There exactly. is angelic tongues. And our, sometimes when we're we're speaking, sometimes our tongues can change. Right. Which oh, yeah. actually, right. It's actually happened here on Crown Chats because I was being attacked by a, some people, I think, of Eastern descent. <laughs> and I was praying. I started praying in tongues, Jay. And all of a sudden I sounded I sounded like I was speaking in Farsi or or like a Hindu. I mean, it was like it, my my entire. And it was funny because Ryan, uh, Ryan was on at that time and he was looking, he was actually looking at my, um, at my, uh, audio, the audio channel. And it was completely different than how I speak in English. Right. I was in Houston. Uh, well, when I lived in Houston years ago, and right. my, my pastor and I went to a prayer meeting with mm -hmm. a bunch of pastors, there were probably 30, 40, 50 pastors there. And I knew what his prayer language sounded like because I'd been okay. around a lot. Sure. So I'm praying in tongues. But three after the at some point in the prayer, there was a lull. Three Spanish pastors came and started talking to him in Spanish really fast. Right, right, he right, right. Up, remember he put up his hand. He goes, whoa, whoa, stop. I don't understand anything you're saying. And so one of the pastors could speak English and Spanish. He goes, well, wait a minute. What do you mean you don't understand? He says, I don't understand a word of Spanish. They, they said, you just prayed the most amazing prayer for our ministry. In, and we heard it in Spanish. But right. I'm sitting next to him. I heard it in his prayer language and tongues. Right. Okay. Right. So there was a mix, and it was interpreted, and it helped their situation. So. Right. And and sometimes what happens is we need to have the gift of interpretation of tongues. Right. Right. Exactly. Okay. Now this, this here we go. How do I know I'm actually praying in tongues and not just making noises? Here we go. Some people, some people are so against tongues they wouldn't even have shoes with tongues in them. So anyway. That's <laughs> Hold on. Let's kick that cow. That's funny. Okay. All right. So how do I know I'm actually praying in tongues and not just making noises? 
faith comes up okay that's just all i'm gonna say okay i know what my prayer language sounds like yeah i got when i was filled with the spirit i got a prayer language i don't believe everybody does that's okay if you disagree with me i prayed for people to get their prayer language without being baptized in the spirit they did i got right. tongues the first time before i even knew there was a holy spirit to be filled with okay right. Right, so, right, right. but i knew it and i've had it since and my and i pray for a lot of people too a lot of people have tongues and they have the same five syllables yep and i i said how many of you if you if you if you saw a 20 year old man talking like a like a six month old baby how many of you would think that's normal right there's something wrong right well how come how come you got a prayer language 15 years ago and it's the same five syllables come on so I, I bring people up i i stand them up i said start and i'll put my hand on the vocal cords and I'll, you got to be praying in tongues as I touch you. And mm -hmm. every time I do this, their language gets expanded. It gets mm -hmm. you know, greatly enhanced. They, they get more and more words and syllables. And mm -hmm. they're like, well, I didn't know I could do that. You know, mm -hmm. well, obviously God wants to increase your prayer language. He doesn't want you to stay the same. And it's, again, it goes back to faith. Everything, everything hinges on faith. Every single right. thing, everything. Yeah. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to also, I'm going to add to that. It says that if I can trust you with a little, I'll give you the more. So right. if you, if you're not praying in tongues, because just like every language, everything that God does in the supernatural, we kind of do in the natural. So if we're learning a new language, okay, you're learning Spanish. Okay. And you're learning how to say, hola, 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 como esta. That's it. That's all you know. When you speak to somebody in Spanish, you're going to say, hola, como esta. They're going to start talking to you. Hola, como esta. That's all you know. If all you know is that, okay, then you're not, you're not going to increase your vocabulary. So what happens is that the more that you speak, Holy Spirit gives you, uh, como esta, muy bien, gracias, right? He's going to give you more words. So now you're increasing your vocabulary. It's it's the same thing with when a baby, like you were saying, when a baby starts speaking, it starts out with dada, that mama, but the parents get so excited that they give the baby a new new words to say, ooh, this is cup, this is, this is a banana, this is dog, this is grandma. And then next thing you know, the baby's vocabulary gets expanded but if the baby doesn't speak the baby's only going to be saying mama dada right. so it's the same thing the pastor that led me into the feeling of the spirit was in south carolina he i remember him saying he said when he first got his prayer language the only only syllable he had was a ah for six a, months he said ah ah <laughs> ah and he felt yeah. silly but at yeah. one point god just expanded it you know That's but it. Don't, don't allow other people i'm going to give you two goofy funny examples but don't allow people to um kind of coach you into something that's not God. Okay? That's right. Like the, the phrase economical condominium, economical condominium. You say that fast enough, it sounds like tongues. All right. Right, 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 right. My favorite one, I can't demonstrate it, but I touch shin and knee thigh butt, you know, <laughs> shin and knee thigh butt. <laughs> Wait, isn't it, isn't there one that should have, could have, would have bought a Honda, something like that? Could have bought a Honda or something. Yeah, you know, Honda, something you know? like that. Yeah, don't yeah. imitate other people. Allow yeah. God to bring it to you, okay? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Who's giving you the gift? That pastor or God? Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, let well, God do the way He wants to. So, right. So the the funny thing, Jay, is when the Lord first told me to start praying for people to get their their spiritual language. Hey, Roger. Um, I didn't know what to do because the way that I got it was by saying the Lord's Prayer. So I started to say the Lord's Prayer really fast. So I started to do that, you know, say the Lord's Prayer. But then I was like, okay, say your ABCs really fast because all they needed to do was to get tongue tied. They had to speak, but they had to get tongue tied. So I said to the Lord, so they're saying the alphabet, singing the alphabet and getting filled with the Holy Spirit and, and getting their language, right? So I said to the Lord, I said, I said, this isn't spiritual enough. And he said, tell them to say hallelujah. Yeah. So I just went on praying for somebody and I tell them, okay, now just start saying hallelujah. They And I just keep telling them, say it faster and faster and faster and faster because all of a sudden they'll just feel uh, tongue tied and then all of a sudden their language will come forth. At least that's that's kind of how I- yeah, You use that phrase because in my book, Willing to Yield, I have a whole chapter on tongues and I call getting untongue tied that's the title of the chapter so. oh i love that i love that because i think it's when when um when i got my spiritual language that's when i started to have visions when i got my spiritual language that's when i i, I started to have encounters 
It, it was because it says that Peter, or excuse me, Paul says, he says, I speak in tongues because it builds up or edifies. It says, because it edifies my spirit. It builds up and increases. And so bigger, bigger, um, your spirit, bigger Holy Spirit, because it, if you're small, if everything says, that's why it says, you know, less of me, more of you. Okay. Less of me is like, like, um, right. it builds is, up my spirit. Tongues is another gift that people neglect. Yeah, you know, they got it once years ago, and they never do anything with it. Pray in the spirit every day. Yes, just, even if it's just five minutes, it'll yes. build up your faith for that yes. day. And you might say, "Well, I feel strong that day." Well, then you'll be even stronger. You know, that's it. I I sometimes just I turn off the radio or you know YouTube in the car or whatever, and I pray in tongues as I drive. Yep. You know, that's it's time that I can do that. So and you uh, can sing in tongues. Yeah. Now these are prayer languages. This right. is your prayer language. Right. But there is also there is also the gift of tongues. The right. gift of tongues is a very different type of tongue. So I wanted to make sure that there were two distinctions. There is your prayer language, which is what we've been talking about. But there's also something called the gift of tongues. The gift of tongues has to have interpretation. All right. It has to have interpretation. Otherwise, the people are not edified. Okay. Exactly. You can also interpret your own tongues when you're yes, paralyzed. You okay, so you need to understand that. And you can ask God to help you interpret what you just prayed. Sometimes I go in and out of English and tongues, English and okay. tongues, as I'm Thanks. praying. And I'll start yeah. repeating or saying a phrase over and over, and I go right back in your tongues. Then I'll yeah. say a different phrase. And I go back, you know, or maybe I, I proclaim something, I declare something, I yeah. uh, decree something, you know, and yeah. then I go back in the tongues again. So it's not either or, it's all that blended together, you know. Right. Well, right. the way that I say it is that tongues is a two-way language. <laughs> tongues, tongues can tongues can be given to us. We cannot, and it also can become through us. So right. sometimes we're speaking in tongues to the Father. Okay, so we're praising, we're talking, we're we're doing it. But and sometimes He's speaking and talking through us right. to decree, declare, and to shift things. All right, and and often, you know. We said before that the gifts are given for other people, okay? But right. the prayer language is, in a sense, given to you so that your faith can rise up Come to on. the point that it needs to be so now you can serve the other people. God's, mm. God's implemented the increments of tongues in your life so that your faith rises so that you can minister effectively to others. Otherwise, otherwise you go around with your head hung down, you're filled with stress, anxiety, grief. Uh, whatever it is, shame, whatever it is the enemy's putting on you, your faith is scrunched down, you know, really yeah. scrunched down. You can't, you can barely stand up. You're full of discouragement or whatever. I tell people all the time, if you're discouraged, start praying in tongues. That discouragement, yeah. within an hour, that'll leave. So, yeah, yeah, that's so good. Okay, let me just make sure. I think we got all of the gifts. I Did think we talk about prophecy at all? Yes, we talked about prophecy, but we can go back. You can you can talk some more about prophecy. Oh, okay, we got tomorrow, you know. Yeah, well, I but I think, okay, so we talked about prophecy. We talked about word of knowledge. That's okay. true. Wisdom. We talked about wisdom. We right. talked about wisdom. We talked about discernment. Yeah. We talked about the miracle miracles. Miracles, faith. We talked about faith. Tongues. We talked about healing. It's healing is eight. What's the other one? Right, we, we right. talked about the... Um, We're missing one. No, no, no. Uh, there's the interpretation of tongues. Here, I'm going to do it this way. Let me do it this way. This is how we did it. <laughs> this is okay. So the, the first Wait, thing. I'll, I'll get the Calvin. One, two. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the 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 first thing that we talked about was word of knowledge. The right. second thing that we talked about was prophecy. The third thing that we talked about was um was faith. The fourth thing that we talked about was miracles. The fifth thing that we talked about was about um discernment. The, the sixth thing that we talked about was, was speaking in tongues. The seven things that we talked about was the interpretation of tongues. We talked about wisdom, too. That's that eight. About wisdom, that's eight. Yeah. So there's one more. I don't know. Faith? Was faith? Did we talk about? We talked about faith. Yep. Oh, hold on. I'm not, I'm not in. I'm in Matthew. Sorry. No, that's okay. I'm here. i got to read my list. No, I'm right here. Okay, it says word of wisdom. We did revelation knowledge. We did the gift of faith. We did healing. We did miracles. We did the gift of prophecy. Maybe we need to do more on prophecy. We have discerning of spirit. We have the different types of tongues and interpretation of tongues. That's it. 
Maybe whether it's nine, I don't know what we're missing, but that's okay. Okay. I thought, well, this is, these are the varieties of gifts of the, so one, two, three, hold on. Well, but there, aren't there two different, like, isn't, isn't that the re redemptive gifts? I thought there were only, I thought there were nine of them, right? All right. There's nine. You keep coming with eight. That's okay. So okay else, which one are we missing crowd? You're watching. <laughs> I know I'm trying to do it. I'm trying to, uh, okay. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Healing. We have prophecy. We have miracles. We have discern discerning. We have different kinds of tongues and we have interpretation of tongues. Hmm. Okay. Let's see. What are we? Oh, mercy. No, mercy is part of the redemptive gifts. Yeah. Mercy's in for Romans 12. That's a yeah, different. Yeah. 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 Let's, right. let's see. Hold on. Faith. Right. We did Not that. Healing. I don't know. I think we got them all. We're I think just... we got them all because I was going down my list. But let's let's talk a little bit about prophecy, because because I feel like that needs to be hit one more time. So so prophecy basically is just speaking into the future. Oh, she can right. Yep. Speaking into the future about and it can tie in with what you're doing presently. Yeah. You know, uh, it can even tie in with God, something God told you in the past with a word of knowledge. You yep. know, but it really is going to give direction. Uh, it points the way it's your index fingers pointing the way towards, uh, something that God wants you to do, you know, perfect. So, yeah. Perfect. What do you think? I, I, I think that we nailed it. Cause Dee said that we, we did nine. She said she counted nine. Okay. Good okay. job. Dee. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. See, we're good. We're good. So, but I, th I think now if anybody has any questions, put it in, put it in the chat because we're going to be, we're going to be getting we're going to be getting off because I'm getting back on the road. I'm heading back to Jersey. <laughs> You're not there now? No, I'm in North Carolina. You're in North Carolina. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm, in Nebraska, I'm in Nebraska for another week. I know. Minnesota. So, yeah. I know. I know. Okay. Um, so if there is anybody else, it takes just a few minutes for people to, to, uh, does anybody have any questions? Shelly, you have any questions? No. Okay. Shelly's good. No. Yes, that was good. Okay, so I'll just give a quick prophetic word. It just yeah. went off in my head. Years ago, you may remember the Lakeland uh, revival was going on. Yes. Mm -hmm. A lot of healings with Todd Bentley and everything else. You know, it's just yeah. a lot of things going on down there. And I was experiencing a lot of the same healings, just not with the crowds that he was having. And I have a personal friend here in town who's on his staff, but I didn't know him real well at the time, but I know him really well now. Anyway, people kept asking me, are you going to go to the Lakeland revival? Are you going to go to the Lakeland revival? And even uh, the Elijah list asked me, my friend Steve Schultz, the Elijah list, and this just came out of my mouth. I said, no, I'm not going to go. And the reason is it's going to, it's just going to suddenly stop. Yeah. You know? yeah. And I shared yeah, that yeah. in May. I shared that in May and July it ended, you know, and, and there was issues and everything else. We won't go into all that, but it just ended. That was a prophetic word. And it was basically for me. Yeah. You yeah. Know? My schedule was tight. I had a lot of things going on in order to schedule going to the Lakeland. I would have had to like schedule it for August or September. It would, you know, and God just gave me a word. It's going to stop. You know, yeah. that's a prophetic word. So yeah. uh, uh, God gave me another prophetic. I share this for the weather. Years ago, can I share this real quick? Sure, of course. So I live here in Nebraska. And years ago, the Huskers used to be a really good football team. <laughs> Not so good anymore, all right? And they were going to go in 2000, I think it was nine, they were going to go to the Holiday Bowl, which is in San Diego. And it's my hometown. And I, I told my family, I said, let's go to the Holiday Bowl. We'll go out there. We'll go to the parade. I'll, we'll stay in my brother's condo on the beach. I know how to get to the stadium, et cetera. So we decided we're going to go. And I prayed about it. And God said, it's going to rain. That is not the rainy season in California, okay? Like the rose parades on January 1st, it hardly ever rains, okay? In Pasadena, this is down in San Diego. And every time I prayed, God said, it's going to rain. So I looked it up. 31 years of history of the Holiday Bowl, and it never rained. Not once. And God said, it's going to rain, and you can't stop it, Jay. It's going to rain that day. So we decided not to go. So he told me five weeks in advance it was going to rain. The Holiday Bowl, it poured buckets. It was so, so much of a downpour. And this is an outdoor stadium, not one that's covered. They had to bus people in because the parking lot was 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 flooded. Okay. God gave me a prophetic word in advance. Now, Nebraska beat Arizona. 
right, right. 31 to nothing. Arizona out there in the desert, they don't know what water is. They don't know what rain is, you know. But uh, <laughs> anyway, it's a prophetic word in advance, five weeks in advance. So listen to God. He'll tell you things to come. So Absolutely. And just uh, I'm just going to say this because uh, do you feel like, the, do you have any prophetic words for any of the people? Uh, hadn't thought about it. What? Maybe we can go that way tomorrow. If yeah, you want. we can do that tomorrow. Yeah, we can do that. Would that be all right? Yeah, absolutely. So tomorrow's going to be we'll friends, and we'll just pray and see if God gives us words or prophetic okay. words. Tomorrow, you know, if you That's want. Yeah. Well, we've never actually ministered together, so this would be the first time. I think we prayed for the sick once. Did we? Yeah, okay. I think we did. Yeah, I think okay. we did that, but I don't think we did anything else. So, we didn't. Yeah. We've never flowed prophetically though, but that should be fun. Yeah, it would be a lot of fun. So yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do tomorrow. Now we know what I'm gonna do, what we're doing tomorrow. Tomorrow's gonna be prophecy. Woo, woo. Prophecy and under that heading of prophecy is words and always words of wisdom, also. So okay, I'll put that up. Is that all right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Do you, okay. would you like to pray everybody out? Yeah, sure. So Father, we just invite your presence as these people conclude today's broadcast. Thank you for Lisa and her amazing ministry and her testimony. And uh, we all these people that watch, look, and I'm looking at names here, Roger, Travis, Linda, Travis, Dixie, uh, the names go on. Lord, thank you for letting them tune in, Brother John, um, uh, Missy, uh, D, and so on, Lord. Everybody that watched today, Lord, let them walk away from here with a nugget, with a little bit of fruit, with something. It, it, it can be the tiniest thing, a mustard seed, but something that they can take and walk into the day and it changes their life, transforms their ministry and brings fruit for the future. So we just thank you. And we just speak to healing. We speak healing right now, especially the pain issues. Lord, we just ask that your presence come and eradicate pain issues in their back, their shoulder joints, knee pain, uh, ankle pain, uh, even, even emotional heartache pain. Lord, we just ask you to do amazing things. Touch them with the Holy Spirit. Let there be a fresh anointing for that. And uh, if you can check it out right now, check out and see if there's a, there's a miracle when you check. It doesn't have to be a long prayer, okay? Jesus, you know, the prayers of Jesus are very short. Rise up and walk, all right? They'll separate the men from the boys. So anyway, thank you, Lord. Bless these people in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, this was so much fun. Thank you, Jay. Hang thank tight. You. I'll say goodbye to you off. But we thank will you. see you guys tomorrow with prophecy, words of wisdom, and an encouraging word. How about that? <laughs> okay, we'll see you tomorrow. God bless. Bye-bye, guys. Bye.